All right, guys, time for another update. Uh, there's been so many things happening here, but let me show you this. All right, look at this mess. Look at this mess. Oh, wait a minute, this is not a mess. This is actually pretty cool. Actually, this is a bit messy, but uh, some people have been getting ahead of me and they're already beating me at building a power wall like this. And uh, there were some questions as to how to connect all of these packs together. Some guy, yeah, was uh, had some crazy ideas. So I had to very quickly just share this with him. This is how this battery pack is connected here. Here's a little small diagram, right? I mean, as you can see, it's just all of the uh, interconnects for all the cells are connected to, together, right? So this is just one big giant uh, parallel 10S battery pack, 36 volts, right? And the reason I'm doing this is because this is the easiest way you get the packs and then you do all the little soldering in there. And then uh, now I, I went fancy, like the picture shows it just straight. You could literally mount all the packs in that configuration and then just solder from this point to that point to that point all the way up right uh the two main negative and positive and then all the points in between uh, you could do that i went a little bit fancier i you know it's for ease of like removing and stuff i went with this like uh, this is a uh, ribbon cable just like i'm doing with my pcb boards right and then all of these interconnects here uh and then i ended up putting uh, a power strip right so this is another pcb based product uh that can handle about a yeah over 100 amps i did the testing on that and it and it came out pretty good so it's a little bit messier than i would want it to be but of course uh you know this is just the first one maybe i'll design a thing that it's gonna be easier i don't know this is this is probably not the best way to do these batteries i think uh there's gonna be some better ways as we move along but what else is going on here? Well, as you can see here, this is a transfer switch. Do you know what a transfer switch is? I didn't really know uh, and understand too well how this worked until I got this one, right? So here we go. Let me see if I can explain it. Here is the panel. Yours might look a little bit different because this is a three phase, right? But it's basically the same thing. Two lines come in on yours and then you have a neutral. On mine, there's three and then a neutral, right? So then all these circuits, so then those feed those rails there, and then those rails then go through the, uh, uh, what are these, uh, breakers, and then the breakers, then they feed those cables, and those cables go to the individual uh, circuits, right? And they go through all these conduits, and they go all the way. By the way, this was a giant mess. This is this was dangerously messy in here. There was a about seven circuits that went nowhere from existing installations. There were two circuits that were tied in together over there in the front. That means that that same circuit would come here to one uh, uh, breaker and then it would go and loop around and then come back in again to another breaker over here. So uh, that means that those cables were if something ever happened uh, bad in that circuit, the breakers would not work because there's two of them now that are connected to the same phase here. And oh, and then by the way, if you connected to a different phase, then you would have 240 and then you would burn everything up on that circuit, right? So it's, it's terrible. I just, it's kind of a mess in here. And then there was a, a tiny circuit with uh, 12 gauge uh, or 14 gauge. What is this? I think 12, 14, 60 gauge cables and it was tied into one of these guys which is a 50 amp circuit exactly this one right here the 50 amp circuit that was also a terrible idea if you have 16 gauge cable going to a circuit you you need to have a 20 amp or a 15 amp uh breaker right so that if anything happens it trips the breaker before it melts all your cables so anyways that's that's the reason why i'm not done with this because i had to spend a whole day just tracing all the circuits where they went and then fix them and then oh my god and then take out all the unneeded uh uh breakers and then uh basically yeah isolate the the, the circuits that i am going to want that are critical that i'm going to want to uh, have on 
when the power goes out. But here's the thing. These are the cables that are feeding all of those circuits, right? This guy here is something that goes in between that, right? Uh, is it the, the black one? Important connect red leads to br a branch circuit breakers. Oh, yeah. So I guess these cables connect to the individual circuit so i'm gonna have to take like that, those cables right if that's the circuit that i want then i'll take it out of there put a wire nut then connect it in here and right and, this, and then this one's our label they have like an a and so those come to one of these switches here and then the red a then that is going to go over here in its place right so basically all just we just deviated that circuit to go through this switch and you do that with all of these circuits. It's got two, four, six, uh, eight, and 10. 10 circuits, but these are put together uh, together like this for like a 220 volt, uh, you know, uh, device. And then there's, these ones are set at 20 amps. Now I think you can undo this. I think you can, I think you can use them regular, but they're tied together just like that. Um, so then what happens is that when you flip it over, right? So this is a line. Basically, when they're in line like this, it just, the cable goes from here to the switch, and then it just connects to the red, and then it goes in there. So there, so there's nothing. It's just, you know, it's just going for an extra, an extra longer ride that, for that circuit, right? But when the power goes out, then these rails are not feeding any of these. So then what you do is you connect... A generator here. In this case, it's not going to be generator. It's going to be the power wall with a, uh, an inverter here, right? Uh, you know, an off-grid inverter, sine wave inverter. And you can do the, the, the split face one, right? Uh, I am waiting for a split face. I have a, a single face right now, 110 face, right? Uh, I, I guess I'm going to use that if I get to it so that I can finish this project and then make the video or whatever. But eventually, I want to put a split face here. So that, yeah, we can run the AC and then my lift. My lift over here is set uh, on a 220 uh, circuit, right? So if I want to run that when the power is out, then I basically need a split face, you know, 220 volt inverter. And so then you, what you do is you connect it in here. Now you, you can use the, this cable, this socket here and put a cable. Or you can, in this case, because this is going to be kind of like a, you know, installed uh, permanently, I can just hardwire that. They, it has breakout things here and I can run a conduit to the actual inverter and then run that in there and uh, get rid of this guy. Um, or I could leave it there, but if I leave it there, I can't. No, that's a bad idea because then these will be live and no, nah, that doesn't work. So I think I either have to hardwire it or leave it there and put a, a, a cable that goes in there, right? Uh, the, the actual socket thing that goes in there. But Basically, when that happens, when the power goes out, all you do is you flip it to gen, right? And those two circuits now, instead of being connected here, now they're being connected through here to one of these faces. And so that means that it's going to get energy from the batteries, invert it to AC, uh, to 110 or 220, and then it's going to feed it in here, go in here, and then that's going to go down to the circuit, and then that's going to power the lights, you know, and whatever else circuits that I have in there. So that's that's what I'm installing here. This is a transfer switch. This is a thing that is common in a lot of homes in America. This is for a backup thing, right? So if you have a generator in your garage, you would install this. And it's basically just so that when the power goes out, you don't have to get your generator out and start it and then have to run a bunch of extension cords all over your house, to your refrigerator, to whatever else did you want. This is simply, you just come in here, flip a switch, boom, right? Now you're on grid power, boom, now you're on auxiliary power. So whether it's a battery, most of these, this is kind of designed for uh, generators, but in this case, we're gonna use it uh, on a uh, inverter-based battery, right? So the, the, we're kind of using a little bit different. and. Every home should have one of these, right? And every home should have a battery and an inverter, backup inverter, right? So this is this is the setup that I think I'm gonna do first. Uh, and then this is gonna be the backup power wall. And this same power can be used as a grid tie, right? And grid tie, uh, let me show you the ones that I'm doing for the grid tie. 
All right, here we go. This is the uh, Grittai, uh power wall that I'm going to make. Actually, should it be the other way around? Well, I don't know. This is 20 kilowatt hours. The other one is about 12 kilowatt hours, right? So this one's a little bit bigger, about twice that. So together, they'll I'll have about 30 kilowatt hours um, or 32 kilowatt hours of uh, storage, right? And that's going to be used for backup. This is going to be daily cycle, right? Uh, why would you want to tie this into a grid tie with these type of inverters here, right? Uh, well, this right now is the summer. We're starting to get a bunch of these notices that uh, you get the super, super peak, critical peak uh, notices or whatever. That means that from 6 p.m. to like 9 p.m. or something, um, they're charging you a ton of money. Because there's, they're, they need so much energy. Everybody's going home and turning in their ACs and, you know, their TVs and their lights and stuff that they are really struggling to meet that demand. And so in order to discourage people from using energy during those times, what they do is they hype the price like crazy, right? Uh, if you're paying 17 cents or the average here in California for uh, a cents per kilowatt hour, during that those hours, because they want you not to use a thing, they could charge you like 50, 60, 70 cents, right? I don't know what it is here because I haven't looked at my bill, but we definitely got one of those calls today. And that is the reason why you would want to do that. Because if you're out here and you're running, right, and you're running your business and you're still here at those hours or whatever, uh, then you want to have some energy, right? And so, of course, do you want to pay a bunch of energy to utility and then get penalized? Uh, or you just want to turn on your batteries and then so these guys you charge them at night when no one is using energy and there's surplus energy or whatever and then what you do is uh then, then you just uh use those inverters and those will just shove the energy back into your wiring and they'll use it and so then less energy comes out of the the grid right and so everybody's happy you're happy because you don't have to pay those outrageous prices uh, the grid is happy because you didn't have to use you lighten up the load for them. And so they are more capable of feeding everyone else that doesn't have a battery. Right. But eventually. The goal is to everyone at home have a battery and everyone can turn that battery on when the uh, there's a demand of, of power. And so that way the utility doesn't have to scramble to try to figure out where they're going to provide the power. Right. So that is what I'm doing here. This is the, the thing. And I spent, I kind of lost a whole day just rewiring this whole place. This is a work in progress. I definitely need to fix these lights and get them up higher because it makes this whole area here very claustrophobic. And in fact, those lights too, I want those high. Because it makes just this just too busy here. There's just, you know, this is a big room here and I want it to feel open and I wanted to do all my work here. But this is this yeah, this feels like a sweatshop, you know. <laughs> so I need to kinda work on it. And so a little by little. Working on the power wall a little bit, work on the other power over there, the wiring, do the thing, do the videos, work on the website. Uh, get some batteries in here. Oh, yeah, by the way, I just, uh, oh, yeah, I got, I got a bunch of, like, batteries so that we can s keep selling stuff. Uh, and they're going to probably be here. We're going to have to probably rent a truck and go get them and then kind of process them and stuff. So, yeah, it's, there's there's quite a bit of work that is happening here. And for me, it feels like I'm going very, very slow. I don't know for you guys if it feels like. But four months ago... You know, in March, I didn't have this place. This place was just an empty room. They had nothing. And since then, I've done all this stuff and somehow still managed to, you know, somewhat stay afloat a little bit. So, yeah, I'm just doing the best I can. I hope uh, I hope you guys are enjoying the ride. And then, yeah, promise uh, in the future, the content's going to get a little bit better. The videos are going to get better. And I'm going to show you more builds. It's going to be awesome. All right. Thank you for watching this video. We'll see you uh, in the next one. All right. Bye. Oh, one last thing before I go. As you know, I have started doing some podcasts. Uh, and I've been having some of my friends, my colleagues uh, as guests. And so I'm promoting 
I'm giving an incentive to you guys to go and watch the video and I'm asking kind of trivia questions. Uh, I asked about what car was the one that blew up on the one that Conrad had, right? So my guest was Conrad. He talked about a story where his car uh, blew up an inverter. And so then I asked you which car was that inverter on and whoever guessed it or whoever put the answer here, then I would, uh, I would uh, raffle off a battery. Uh, and so now let's raffle out the battery here. Okay, so here are all the comments that you guys put in that post, right? So now, let's pick a uh, yeah, let's 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 pick a, uh, a winner here. Let's see, let's do this guy here, Chris de la Pena. You are the winner. Um, let me write that in there. All right, there we go. So. Uh, if you want to win a battery, I'm giving away another battery here. Uh, you'll just have to tell me what was the question this time around. Yeah, if you want to win four of these batteries, uh, then you have to go watch the podcast with Nikki. And you have to tell me someone that, who can tell me what was Nikki's first electric car. There you go. What was her first electric car. The answers, of course, in the podcast, she talks about that car. And once you have that answer, then you can come and then post, uh, you can, you can message me directly here on Facebook, and then you can just comment on the video that you found the answer, but don't put the answer on the video because then you just give it away to other people and then you just, uh, decrease your chances. Right? So, uh, I'm going to do that next week. I'll give, I'll pick a winner next week out of the ones that come. And you come and post it. Well, yeah, I'll post. It's going to be hard to look through all of those. I guess, yeah. Um, post post uh, that, you, did you put, that you found the answer here on this post, right? Uh, this is a sticky on the Jehu's uh, DIY Powerwalls group so that I can go and pick the winner from here. And then once, uh, you know, once I can pick you, then I can go into my messages and then indeed verify that you did have the answer. You just weren't someone that just did the thing or whatever. I, I will work a little bit better on uh, getting this streamlined better so that <laughs> we can pick these and yeah. But for now, yeah, you have to do, send me the message, private message that's like with the answer and then post here that you found the answer so I can pick it from a winner here. Or I can just pick it from the actual video. Mm. Either way, post it here, post it over there. I'll pick a winner from one of these lists here. And then hopefully it's you, right? And uh, right now, look, there's only one comment here. So the odds are going to be pretty good because no one's watching these. So there you go. Thank you for watching this video. We'll see you guys in the next one.